Hello and welcome to The Rook's Nest. Alex here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create materials with patterns like this procedurally, all within the Redshift shader graph. So without any further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside Cinema. Now I'm just going to go over the scene quickly. All I have is a plane object, three lights, a dome light and two area lights. Obviously the camera we're looking through with a protection tag on it so I don't move it by accident and our redshift material. Now this plane, I gave it some width segments just to help with the subdivisions and the displacement. I'm not sure if it does actually help but uh, I did it anyway because if you come to this tab here which is our redshift object tag and we go to geometry I've got this enabled which is the tessellation which is essentially like a subdiv uh, and depending on you've got a maximum subdivisions here and a minimum edge length your minimum edge length is the minimum length for a polygon or edge and it's two pixels at the moment so it will only subdivide down to two pixels and maximum subdivisions is how many times each polygon can be subdivided. If that makes sense. Uh, and then obviously I've got the displacement enabled just with the default one and one on maximum displacement and displacement scale, which is what's giving you these uh, displaced circles. Now, if we take a quick look at the render, uh, the redshift shader graph, as you can see, it may seem a bit complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. All we're doing here is we're creating this pattern down here which is all these C4D shaders and then we're combining them in a color layer node and using it as a displacement on our object. If we turn this off, you'll see we've just got these uh, circles with no difference in height. We pop this back on uh, and then I've just taken some parts of this, this shader setup and used it to drive different materials as in we've got like a uh, gold material a copper material my favorite a, uh, a custom material which I think is just this dark semi-glossy black and a silver material and that's all split up in this material blender which is then uh, put into the surface of our material oh I don't know why this is here this shouldn't be there that's a leftover from a previous part. So I'll delete that. So let's delete this material and start from scratch. Voila. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to Redshift, Material, Pick Material, and New Base Material. And we're going to open that up in our shader graph. So let's make our base pattern first. Let's grab ourselves a color layer shader there we go pop that in let's run that straight into our surface for now we're not going to be using any materials there move that down there let's grab ourselves a c4d shader and a texture node and let's run our shader into our texture text zero and the reason we do that is because we can't run this straight into any of these. It won't let you. See how it's grayed out? Uh, you have to run the C4D shader through this RS texture node first. So let's pipe that straight into our base color. Let's turn off layer one. So we're just using the base color at the moment. And let's also make sure we've applied our material to our object so we can have a look. Now we can't see anything at the moment. I think that's because we're zoomed in too far. And we haven't applied a shader in here. So we want to choose gradient. Let's increase the resolution of this just a bit. Uh, let's open up our gradient. Let's change it to a circular gradient. And we're going to reverse the knots. So we've got white circles. And the reason we're doing that is because displacement works on height in the white values. So any areas we want raised, we need to lighten, and any areas we don't want raised, we need to be black. So let's just sharpen this up, make it more defined circle. There we go. Let me just reposition this view so it's a bit 
better to easier to see. Right, back to our shader graph. Now also we see we've only got one big circle. So if we come into RS texture and we come to on the general tab, let's do some scale remapping and let's times it by four on each axis. So now we've got a grid of uh, 16 circles. Now we want every other circle to be different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another C4 D text shader. In fact, I'm just going to control drag this one down along with another RS texture. So we control that down. Let's change this shader to a, let's come down to surfaces and choose checkerboard. So let's put this into this texture and let's output it to our surface so we can see what we're doing. Uh, we don't want it to be scaled as much as that. So let's just put this back down to Let's put it down to two for now, or one even. Let's go back to one. Now, if we plug this one back in and we put this into our layer one, we can see as we enable it that these squares aren't lining up with the circles. And we need, we're going to use this pattern to mask out every other circle. Now, to do that, we need to go into our checkerboard, its properties, and let's reduce this to one. For now and see what we get right there we go so now that's not too bad if we wanted to do it in blocks and just separate these group of circles say we wanted these four and these four different to these four and these four we could leave it as is but i want it alternating so let's just adjust the scale of our checkerboard and let's just double it so it's two now, if we turn on the checkerboard on and off, you can see, can you see here how one circle lines up with one checkerboard? Right. Now let's use the checkerboard to remove the circles we don't want. And we're gonna use is a color subtract node. And this is basically gonna subtract any values of white from white. So here we go, if we plug in one into our base there, let's disable this from here. Put in our second checkerboard. Uh, disable layer one, and there we go, you see? So now our checkerboard is being subtracted away from our dots, and we've got these. Now let's make the smaller dots. Let's grab this whole chain here. Control drag it down, plug it into layer. Actually, let's go straight into surface for now. It's exactly the same, but all we're going to do is come to our checkerboard and just reverse these round. So, sorry, that needs to be black and our color two needs to be white. There we go, we flipped them round. Let's come to our gradient and let's just make it smaller so we can clearly see it. There we go. Now we need to merge these dots with these dots. So we're going to stick it into layer one, layer one color. Rearrange this properly. Uh, enable it and change the mode to lighten. There we go. Uh, I would normally do add, but for some reason it doesn't quite work the way I expect it to. So lighten does the trick. There we go, right. So we've got our alternating dots. Let's add some other bits. So let's maybe let's add that line, the grid line. So let's move all this up again. Let's just, let's just create a new C4D shader. We're gonna need a texture node. And let's just reset these values, make sure they're at one, one. Pump that into there, like there. Let's just look at the direct output and let's select a gradient. And all I'm going to do on this is I'm going to pop this knot in the middle. If you open up this gradient, we can say exactly in the middle. So I'm going to change that knot to 50%. Boom. Bring this in, add ourselves another knot. Let's change that to white. Oh, means to do that. 
And let's just, just dial these in so they're exactly the same. 45 and 45. Oh, not 45, sorry, 55. And also I've realized it's the wrong way around. So we need this to be black and this to be white and black. There you go, so we've got a line. Now, if we want, we want that to line up with our dots. So we're going to need to tile it. And we'll do that in our texture node again. So let's see what happens if we do it along the U. I think that lines up all right. But in fact, I think we might want to increase it even more. But let's just see what happens. Let's add it to our layer 2 color. Come in here, enable layer 2. Change the blend blending mode to lighten. And let's see the output. There we go. So now we've got these lines joining up with these circles. Now to make it more interesting quickly, I'm just going to adjust the colors of these because I want them to appear at different heights in the displacement. So if we go to our dot here, I don't want this to be as tall or as displaced as the rest. So I'm going to change this value to 80%. So it's slightly grayer. And then for the line, I'm going to do the same thing, but much lower. And I'm going to go, I think you should only be 50%. So we're getting a little bump. So we've got varying stages of depth. Now let's add that final little flourish, which was the circular dots, those circular rings that were in between these gaps. And to do that, I'm just going to create a, another shader node. And it's going to be a gradient again. Let's grab this texture node. Let's reset this to one, one. Let's pop that into there. Now in the gradient, let's look at the output. I used star, tiled it a bunch, so let's just make it four by four. And I played around with these values. The reason I use this corners thing oh, is because it will offset it automatically for me. You see, they're not, it's not in the center like the other dots. It's in between them all. Uh, but we just add in another black dot either side. And we've got ourselves some rings. Like so. And then all we need to do is add that into here. Layer three color. Connect our color layer back up. Let's enable layer three. And blending mode and change it to lighten there you go we've got a pattern so let's do a quick bit of housekeeping i want to make this pattern texture scalable within the shader graph without having to go into each individual value and editing them separately so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create ourselves a scale constant which is just going to be a if you go into math uh, constant and at the moment let's make it one we also need a couple more constants. So let's say, let's have a look. So we've got four in scale here, two there, four, two, four, and four. Now this one doesn't matter, there's a one there because if you just four, it just scales it in the axis this way and it doesn't make a difference because it's just straight lines. So let's create those constants. So one, four, a four. And to make it easier, I might just rename this four and let's control drag this down and let's call this one two. Rename, sorry, rename it two. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pipe these into our values for the scale by multiplying a constant with these two numbers. So let's get ourselves a multiply node. Scalar multiply. Our constant is always going to be our input. And we're going to need one for each of these. So one for this one, one for this one. That in there. This one's going to be our four. And this one's going to be our two. And now we just take this. We come into our RS texture. We go to the UV map and scale. Because that was a four. This one is a two. So we take the two. Come in here. UV scale good nothing's changing that's what i like to see 
same thing for this one. So this one's a four again. Scale. And this one's a two. View at scale. And these ones are four, are both four. So we'll just take this four, UV scale, and four, UV scale. Now, when I adjust this value, so say two now, look at that. I've just scaled it and I can do 1.5. So I can get an exact value. And the reason I want to do it this way is because I'm going to be adding noise over the top and I don't want it to be tiled. I can, you could tile it this way, but I'd rather it was tiled procedurally within. I want to adjust the individual scales of the noise compared to the compared to the pattern to tweak it, you know, fine tune it. So let's start using this properly now to drive our material. So let's create a material blender. This strange come out without any come in without any inputs there, but that's weird. And let's create our base material, which is going to be just our sort of dark diffuse reflective color. So let's put this out onto surface. And let's put this into our base color. There we go. We've got this like reflective surface. Now let's add our displacement from here. So we're going to add a displacement node. There it is, displace. Let's pop our, our pattern into the texture map. And let's just output that straight into displacement. And there we go. You can see now we've got these rings and circles appearing. Now let's, I'm going to go back to this camera because it gives you a better view of the actual displacement. There we go. So we see this ring's quite high. This ring's quite low. La la da. So I'm just going to scale this to the value that I think I had it in the final, which was eight. Let's update. There we go. And you can see this ring is far too prominent at the moment because that's because I forgot to tone it down into something a little less prominent. So let's make this value 40. Give it a second to update. There you go. That's better. Far, far better. So let's create this copper and silver material. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to grab uh, materials again. A new material. Choose copper. And the same, this one, we're just going to choose silver. And we're going to put this as our layer one color. And also, we're going to put it as our layer two. Ooh, not blend color. Our layer two color. And the silver, we're going to make our layer four color. At the moment, they're not blending together at all. So we need to give them the information in this blend color channel as into which areas are going to be which material. So let's start with our big circles first. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color sub node, go to layer one, drop it down into layer one blend color. There we go. Now we've got our gold discs. I also want these rings to be, I mean, copper, these rings to be copper. So I'm going to come down here, take this, which is our copper, our little rings. And I'm going to make this layer blend color two. And there we go. Now you can't really see it very well. And that's because our values in our shader aren't hundred percent white. So in between this and this, I need to add in a ramp node. Let's take this into here, input, take this into here, output into our blend two color. And what we can do is we're just going to crush this down. There we go. So now we can see, bring this value in, you know, nice and clear now. Now we're going to do the same for the silver, which is here, which is just these little dots, small dots. I'm going to take this output from our small circles. Again, I'm going to duplicate this ramp because I'm going to use the same one for now. I'm going to input our small dots, come to the material, layer three, blend color three. 
And at the moment, you can't see anything. Because I accidentally put this material into blend color 4. When it should be in layer color 3. My bad. Let's move this back up here. There we go. So now we've got our white or our silver dots. Now let's just make some of these materials a bit more interesting. Like this is too clean. This black material. So let's go for a max on noise. Uh, get a ramp node that I run it through. Input ramp out color. We're going to take this and we're going to put it into our reflection roughness. Now we change the noise type to something a bit more interesting. Say like Poxo. So we've got these. I might just increase the scale a bit. There we go. And then just increase the octaves, give it a bit more detail. And let's clamp this down because I don't want it to be fully reflective at any point. So this raised black being completely uh, smooth, white being completely rough. Let's just put it that at 20%. Maybe just bring it down a bit. Crush the values. Still a bit too extreme. I might even make it not 100% white. There you go. Just to see, just to break up the surface a bit. And then let's break up this displacement as well. So let's use a, another Maxon noise. Uh, some noise. We'll stick that into this copy, this ramp down again. Input it. And this one we're going to go straight into a. Uh, just going to put it into our layer five or layer four of our displacement. And change again to enable it. Change it to lighten. Where I can find it. There it is. So let's just take a look at it first, actually, without it having to do all the calculating. Now, we definitely don't want it to be 100% black, you see? I mean, right, you want it to be 100% black because we want to keep the black areas. And let's get rid of this displacement so it calculates faster. Uh, also, this noise is not the type of noise we want. We want something a bit more interesting. So let's go for wavy turbulence. Let's uh, reduce the, let's make this white. Here we go, pop that there, we'll just leave it. Let's crush it, maybe make it a bit more defined, like contrasty. That maybe have a bit more. And then if we come to here, our layer color, we can just tweak this mix value even more. And in fact, I want it to sort of multiply with this top. I don't want this to be flat white. So let's change this to multiply. So, you, so there you go. So you can see it's slightly coming in there. See the slight variation. If I increase it even more. You see how it's just affecting this top. Let's just drop it down. There you go. Because I really only want it to affect the displaced areas. I think I want to keep the base, this bottom bit smooth. So multiply is the good. Because if it's black, zero times one is zero. So black stay black and multiply. So if we take a look at this now in the displacement. So let's pop it in displace. Get rid of that surface, drop the old material stack on. There we go. See, it's a bit too extreme right now. So let me just drop this down. Maybe what? 0.1. So yeah, that's everything. So go ahead and have a play around yourself with different types of C40 shader and see what you can come up with. Well done for making it this far. If you like the video, please subscribe, leave a comment, especially if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials. All the links to any assets used will be in the description below, along with our Patreon, where you can download the project files for this final animation. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching.